This is Jose Merino, Editor-in-Chief of the Neurology Family of Journals. The Neurology Podcast provides practical information to neurologists and other clinicians to help them provide better care for their patients. Thanks for listening and have a great week. Welcome to the Neurology Podcast. This is Allison Christie, pediatric neurologist in Portland, Oregon. I'm talking today with Tatiana Bramova Erdel, adult neurologist and vice director of the Center for Rare Diseases in the Department of Neurology at the University Inns Hospital there in Switzerland. And we're talking today about her article, Efficacy and Safety of N Acetyl L Leucine in Children and Adults with GM2 Gangliosidosis. Welcome, Tatiana. Thank you very much, Alison. I think this is such an interesting article. Tell me a little bit more about GM2 gangliosidosis and how they're usually treated. GM2 gangliosidosis, namely Tay-Zex and Tenthoff diseases, are rare autosomal recessive lysosomal disorders. They most commonly affect, unfortunately, children, and they are characterized by progressive neurodegeneration, meaning that these patients often have premature death and are affected by a number of very debilitating symptoms, such as cerebral ataxia, dystonia, dysphagia, and dysartria. And are there treatments for this? Unfortunately, no treatments for GM2 gangliosidosis are currently approved and in any jurisdiction worldwide. No. So there is just a palliative care for these patients. So what is N-acetyl-L-leucine and why did you think it would be helpful in this situation? N-acetyl-L-leucine is a modified amino acid of the essential amino acid leucine, and it has been marketed and approved since 1957 in France under the name Tanganil, but for different indication for acute vertiginous dizziness episodes. So back to 2013, we performed some studies in a mouse model of peripheral unilateral vestibular deficit, where we saw an activation of vestibular cerebellum in a small pet device, basically, for these mice. And we were thinking, okay, what if this drug actually not just works on the balance networks, but actually also works on the cerebellar networks? And Together with Professor Michael Stroop from Munich, we administered acetyl d leucine to patients with heterogeneous cerebral ataxias. We saw an improvement of cerebellar signs and symptoms, and given that patients with another lysosomal storage disorder, Niemann pick type C, and also patients with GM2 gangliosidosis suffer predominantly cerebral ataxia, we thought that it might be useful and actually might improve the functioning and also quality of life of these patients. So from 2013 on, we have performed a number of different observational studies, a number of different animal studies, so also in mouse model of Senthoff disease, in the mouse model of Niemann pig type C. And we have seen that also the mouse models benefited from the treatment with acetyl L-leucine and that actually L-leucine is the pharmacologically active enantiomer and has also better, a better pharmacokinetics than the D enantiomer. That's incredible. So really bench to bedside with this mouse model. Indeed. And so you enrolled 30 patients in this study. And what kind of outcomes were you looking for? Regarding the design of this open label study, we have worked with patient organizations and families very closely and also other leading clinicians in order to design a master protocol that sort of reflects the impairment and ethical aspects of this devastating disease. And we came up with the open label because, well, we didn't think that we can stay from the ethical point of view for this. And we decided to evaluate the symptomatic effects of acetyl leucine in a short setting. So we had two weeks of baseline, then six weeks on medication and six weeks of washout period. And regarding uh, the outcomes were basically the functional scale, obviously scale for the assessment of cerebral ataxia, spinal cerebral ataxia, functional index and quality of life. We used a blinded primary endpoint, the clinical impression of change in severity. 
And we had two blinded raters and one rater was a judicator, basically, meaning that if these two raters couldn't define, okay, is it, so they were like very different, more than two points from each other, a judicator came into it and decided then. What does this mean for us in clinic? Is this something we can prescribe to our patients? Well, unfortunately, not yet. NSETAL eolucin is not available anywhere in the world on the market, so you cannot prescribe it right now. However, as I have mentioned, we have been working also in the field of Niemann-Pick type C field, which is a related lysosomal storage disorder. And we are currently running a phase three placebo controlled trial in this disease. And if uh, the results of this clinical trial will come up positive, then we go to the authorities, to the FDA and EMA, and we'll ask also for the market authorization for the approval in the GM to gangliosidosis indication. So basically, because we have applied already for the orphan drug designation, so N-acetyl eolucin has the orphan drug designation in GM2 indication. However, um, we won't be probably performing, we won't be conducting a long-term clinical trial in GM2 gangliosidosis. What I would also like to add is that like as a follow-up trial to this open-label GM2 gangliosidosis symptomatic trial, there was an extension phase for one year that finished just recently, a few weeks ago. So we will go back to the data. We will have a look on the pharmacokinetics, on the functioning quality of life and symptoms and signs of the GM2 gangliosidosis on medication because it is open label extension phase with drug, obviously. And maybe we will have also exciting results to report and, well, there will be no problem with the market authorization. So I am optimistic that maybe in one and or in one and a half year, we might have an acetyl eolucin in this indication also on the market in the U.S. Let's see. Let's hope. What are the next steps for your study? We will definitely look more into this long-term data that we have already, the longitudinal data. And especially, we really hope that this clinical trial in patients with Niemann pick C will be positive because then it's much easier to gain the approval if in one indication of a rare disease in a very relative, related disease to GM2 gangliosidosis, there are positive results reported, then it's very highly probable that it will be the case also for GM2 gangliosidosis because also the pathophysiology is very similar and also that the, basically the, the authorities will also accept the our application for the marketing authorization. So once more, I do not think that we will perform the long-term clinical trial for the disease-modifying effects. I just hope that in one and a half years, we will have, well, basically the drug on the market. Thank you so much for telling us about this really interesting study. You're welcome. It, w- it was awesome to speak to you today. Thank you for having me. And thank you for listening. And if you want to read more, the, you can find efficacy and safety of n acetyl l leucine in children and adults with GM2 gangliosidosis, published online December 1st, 2022 in the Green Journal of Neurology and published in print March 7th, 2023. This is Stacey Clardy, your podcast editor. If you've enjoyed the podcast, please take a few moments to subscribe, rate, and review the Neurology Podcast through Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. And remember, you can always head to neurology.org backslash podcast for our full list of past episodes, or you can also search by keyword in your podcast app for any neurology-specific topics you want to learn about.